Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, the secrets to success and happiness in grinding plunge lines. So today we'll be keeping it kind of short. Uh, a viewer sent me a note a few weeks ago asking for some help about how to grind plunge lines. So we're going to get right to that very question. Okay, first, what's a plunge line? The plunge line is the line formed where the bevel, that's the knifey part of the knife, meets the ricasso. That's this little blunt bit right here next to the handle. See this little line? That's the plunge line. It's formed in the process of grinding this bevel using a grinding belt. Now, some plunge lines are straight, some are curved, some are smooth, some are sharp. Before we get started, let me mention that I'm going to show everything on a flat platen, grinding freehand. But everything I do here applies to a contact wheel, which is what you'd use to hollow grind. And within obvious limits, it also applies to grinding with a jig. Note that during some of the demonstrations, I'll be holding a bar of steel in a somewhat unnatural way, standing off to the side just so you can see the lines clearly. Don't imitate the way I'm holding it. I'm not standing in my normal position or using my normal grip, just so that the camera can look straight at the belt. All right, so first tip, just decide exactly where you want that grind line to terminate, mark it, Establish it with your very first grind and then stick with it as you continue grinding. When I grind my bevels, I generally mark the spot where I want my plunge line to terminate. So I just line that up with the edge of the belt and start grinding away. I always start grinding right at the plunge line and then work my way back towards the tip. If you make a mess of the plunge line right off the bat by kind of poking and dinking around and changing your mind about where exactly you want it, it can be hard to fix later. So I grind a fairly shallow bevel, just really crunching in there to set the bevel so that I know exactly where my grind is. Then I'll come back, steepen up the angle, and work my way back up the knife. Now that the bevel's been established, I feather the belt in from the edge side then lay that bevel flat on the belt, feeling where the flat of the bevel is. A really important aspect of grinding is learning sensitivity to the belt and being able to feel where your bevel is so that it's laying nice and flat for the belt. If you grind at a bunch of different angles, you'll have all kinds of problems keeping your grind consistent. Tip number two, make your plunge line symmetrical from one side of the blade to the other. Same deal as with the previous hint. Know where you want your bevels to be. Mark the location. Establish them in exactly the same place on each side and leave them there. Futzing around later to even them up, hey, it can be done, but you're more likely to mess something up when you try to move them. So hang your belt off the edge of the platen or it could be the contact wheel to create soft curved plunge lines. How does that work? So this is the platen, the surface that supports your belt when you flat grind. Flat surface, flat grind on your knife. Now this platen here is the same width, two inches, as the grinding belt. Under normal circumstances you want that belt centered up so that the edge of the belt and the edge of the platen on both sides are the same. Then you just grind away. If you do that, again, all things being equal, you get a nice, straight, crisp, hard plunge line. Now, here's the tracking adjustment for my grinder. The old knob died and I made this new one. It's ugly as hell, but it works much better than the old knob. Anyway, watch as I adjust the tracking. So the belt moves offline so that it's hanging off the edge a little bit. So you can use that tracking adjustment to just hang it off the platen or the contact wheel. If you do it about an eighth of an inch, that plunge line will soften up a little, giving you just a little bit of smoother transition from the blade to the ricasso. If you hang it off further, say a quarter of an inch, it'll really round everything off. It'll also change the grind line at the top from a sharp corner to a curve. Different belts give you different kinds of plunge lines. Really hard belts like this Norzon ceramic belt either make very sharp edges 
or long sweeping curves say hanging the belt off at least a quarter of an inch but they're not so good for that in-between line where you're hanging it off let's say maybe an eighth of an inch your basic aluminum oxide belt like this one is better for those sort of in-between curves softer thinner belt really soft belts like these 3m trizac belts can track almost anything sharp or soft but they're more intended for finish work than for rough grinding the gator grit here is especially good for cleaning the inside of a curved plunge line. I have a wide variety of belts in my shop, some of which are better for one task, some for another. Try using the same techniques but with different belts and you'll see that you get different results. Now everybody's touch is different, everybody's grinder's different, so you have to work this out for yourself to some degree. But try a bunch of different stuff. Incidentally, why a soft plunge line versus a hard one? Is one better than the other? Is one right and one wrong? Nah, they're just different. Totally a matter of taste. Hard ones are a little easier and faster to do, so in a production environment, there's some advantages to that. You don't have to mess with changing the tracking. You can just blast away. Soft ones, they take a little more skill to get right, but if you're finishing by hand, soft ones are much easier to finish. Hand sanding this little crevice or this little area right by the plunge line on a very hard plunge line is really a giant pain in the nuts. Getting all the scratch marks out takes a lot of work. Also, curved plunge lines look kind of cool, but hey, it's totally a matter of taste. Edit your grind as you get closer to the end of your grinding operation. What I mean by that is just clean it up at the end. You don't have to have it perfect at the very beginning. You want to establish where it's going to be, but sometimes there's some little imperfections in it and you can fix those towards the end. Now, here's the thing about this area near the plunge line. Your belt won't naturally spend as much time there as it does the rest of the blade. It's just math. You move it this way and that's the end of the contact between the belt and the area closest to the plunge line. So logically, there's not as much friction, not as much contact, not as much bite, so it's not going to take off as much material there. Again, all things being equal. So just recognize that at the outset. If you just apply even pressure and move from the ricasso to the tip, the center section will always get ground deeper than the ends. It spends more time on the belt, so you have to recognize that fact and counter it. That means you have to apply a little extra pressure at the plunge line to get an even grind straight across the top of the blade. I'm exaggerating here. You don't actually want to rock the blade off the belt like I'm doing here, but that's kind of the feel that you want. You want to give a little pressure. I usually do it with my thumb. You just want that little bit of extra pressure, a little bit of extra attention right there next to the plunge line. When I get right close to where I want to finish the grind, I feather the blade onto the belt, usually sort of in the middle, and then kind of gently bump the belt into the plunge line, being extremely careful to give it gentle extra pressure there. If you don't keep firm pressure against the belt at the plunge line when you're doing this, the other side of the belt will cut into the bevel, making your grind wiggle, or in worst case, the entire blade will kind of bounce off the platen and your grind will get out of alignment. In all grinding, you want to feel that flat against the belt and hold it there. Never let it bump off. Vary the angle of your blade against the platen to create different plunge line effects. I'm not talking about the bevel angle, which you're going to adjust by moving your hands this way. I'm talking about the actual angle of the entire blade as you present it to the platen. Bottom line, there's not one perfect way to do this. You can use a variety of techniques to achieve a variety of different effects. The main thing is that you want to kind of hang in there right to the end and make sure that when you go on that final pass that you clean them up and make them nice and sharp. You can do this by easing up, taking a little more time, being a little bit softer with it, and not trying to do anything too dramatic when you get to the end. So I'd be lying if I told you there's a simple formula to this. The reality is that grinding is a skill and part of what you're going to have to do is just practice just like if you're trying to learn how to throw a curveball or learn how to make free throws. You have to repeat it a lot. Um, 
So a lot of this is feel. But if you know what you're aiming for, it helps you ramp up that learning curve a lot faster. Anyway, I hope this helps you gain a little confidence and make those grind lines just that much cleaner and tighter. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.